Hello everyone and a warm welcome to you all. Some time ago, I thoroughly tested the extremely compact power station from All Powers, the S300. But in today's video, things are getting much more intense, more capacity, more ports, and more power. We're talking about the high-end power station from All Powers, the S2000 Pro. What this powerful powerhouse from All Powers has to offer, how it performs in tests, and whether it's worth the investment or if you should consider investing in another power station instead, these are the questions we'll be addressing in today's video. I'd say let's jump in right after the intro, but if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel for free and activate the bell so you don't miss any future videos. You can find the current prices of these power stations in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support, and with that, let's get started after the intro. If you're on the go, for example, while camping and need a powerful power station to continue supplying electricity to your devices, and if that small power station is just a bit too small, then today I've got just the right thing for you. In the background, you can see the powerful S2000 Pro from All Powers, a real powerhouse when it comes to mobile power supply, at least in theory. But what can we really expect from this power station and how does it perform in practice? We're going to take a detailed look at that now. For those of you who haven't yet seen the video on this compact device, you should definitely check it out. It's also a very, very interesting power station. You can find the video either now on the info card at the top right or on my channel. And with that, I'd say let's start right away with the unboxing. Inside the product box right at the top, we have the user manual in several languages. Just below that is a thick foam insert to protect the power station. On the left and right, there are two small pockets where you'll find the cables and a protective cover for the power station. And finally, in the center of the box, there's the power station itself, the S2000 Pro. And that's it for the unboxing. It's completely sufficient to get the device up and running right away. Additional cables, adapters, solar panels and the like can, of course, be purchased separately. However, I find it quite practical that this model comes with a small transport or protective bag, as you can see. The bag is quite thin on one side, making it easier to store and transport, and on the other side, it's also splash-proof, which offers the significant advantage of keeping the power station well protected when it's inside. For example, while camping, it won't get dirty or wet. Personally, I think this is a very practical accessory. That covers the contents. Now, let's focus on the power station itself. We'll start with the exterior. At first glance, you'll notice that this power station has a rather simple design. There are no contrasting color elements and overall, the casing is quite dark, making it very understated. However, this is quite practical as it allows the power station to blend unobtrusively into its surroundings, whether you're camping or in a motorhome. As for the build quality, the device also makes a fairly good impression. Of course, it's entirely made of plastic, but the casing is quite thick. This means the device is fairly robust in practice and doesn't need to be handled with kid gloves. What stands out, especially in connection with the dimensions shown below, is the size of this power station, particularly when compared to the smaller S300, which is largely due to this power station's capacity. With a solid capacity of 1,451 watt hours, this power station, as the graphic nicely illustrates, is one of the larger models in the test. Naturally, this also means the power station has a certain weight. Specifically, I weighed it and found it to be 13.06 kilograms, which is not exactly light as the graphic also clearly shows. This means I wouldn't want to carry the power station around all day. However, short distances are no problem at all thanks to the two large handles on the right and left. Another point worth mentioning is the energy density of this power station, which can be calculated based on its weight and stated capacity. This power station has a solid energy density of 111 watt hours per kilogram, which, as the graphic shows, is particularly good and surpasses all the devices we've tested so far. In practice, this means that this power station can store significantly more energy at a lower weight, which is largely due to the built in battery cells as we'll take a closer look at later in the video. So, what else is there to mention about the exterior? 
Of course, the front of the device is particularly noteworthy as this is where most of the ports, controls, and the display are located. Upon activating the power station, we can see the fairly large 3.6-inch LC display on the front, which, in my opinion, is easy to read and well-structured. In terms of brightness, I have to say it's sufficient. Even under bright studio lights, the display is still easy to read. Only in direct sunlight could it, in my opinion, be a bit brighter. As for the controls, there's nothing to complain about. They're well-positioned, large enough, and easy to operate. The only thing this power station might be missing is a built-in LED light, as there isn't one here. Let's move on to the next important point, the ports. These are mainly located on the front of the power station, with just one port hidden at the back. Overall, this model has 13 ports, which, as shown in the graphic, is quite generous and diverse compared to other devices we've tested. At the top, as you can see, are the most important ports, specifically the AC outlets. The power station has four of them, which can deliver up to 2,400 watts, but more on that in a moment. In practice, I started by testing the inverter, or AC output, with an oscilloscope. As you can see, the power station, or rather the inverter, delivers a nice, consistent, and smooth sine wave at both 50 and 60 Hz. This is undoubtedly essential for the operation of electrical devices via these ports, so there's nothing to complain about. Further ports are located directly below on the left side, as you can see, with quite a few of them. At the top, we have a 12-volt car socket. Directly below that are two USB Type-C ports. This is quite practical since both offer power delivery up to 100 watts, allowing us to charge two devices simultaneously, such as two laptops. And lastly, directly below that, there are four additional USB-A ports, two with 12 watts, and the other two with 18 watts. In terms of outputs, I think the power station has plenty to offer. The only thing I might still wish for is a wireless charging pad on the top, as there's definitely enough space for it. On the other hand, just like the smaller variant we've already tested, this power station has a trick up its sleeve. It's Bluetooth enabled. This means I can connect it to the corresponding All Powers app on my smartphone, allowing me to control the power station wirelessly from several meters away. For example, I can turn the AC or DC port on and off, check the capacity, and more. This is definitely a very practical feature, as it means you don't always have to go over to the power station, but can conveniently operate it wirelessly instead. This brings us to the next important question. What options are available for charging the power station, and how long does it take? The answer, there are two options in total, and the charging process is quite fast. Option number one, the classic one, is charging via the power grid. For this, you'll find the port for the included power cable on the back, allowing you to charge the power station with up to 1,500 watts, which is really impressive because it allows you to charge the power station from 0 to 100% in about an hour. And option number two, charging with the solar panel, which lets you easily charge the power station on the go in a short time. For this, there's an XT60 port located in the bottom right corner under a cover where you can connect solar panels of any size using the appropriate adapter cable. The port is also designed for high power input. Specifically, you can input up to 1000 watts into the power station via solar panels. This means that under optimal conditions, the power station can also be fully charged through this port in about an hour and a half. In terms of charging options, especially regarding the solar input, the S2000 Pro is really well equipped. The only thing you might still wish for is charging via USB Type-C, but of course, with this capacity, it would take quite a while. However, the heart of this power station is the built-in battery cells, just like in the smaller variant, the S2000 also uses built-in lithium-ion cells, unlike many other power stations that use lithium-iron phosphate cells. In practice, lithium-iron phosphate cells are naturally safer because they cannot spontaneously ignite, for example, in the event of a fire. However, lithium-ion cells, like the ones found in smartphones, have the advantage of storing more energy at a lower weight. Last but not least, this power station achieves its particularly high energy density of 111 watt-hours, as shown in the graphic. 
Additionally, as previously mentioned, the S2000 has a very high capacity of 1,451 watt-hours, placing it among the higher-end models. I also tested this capacity, or rather its efficiency, in practice to see how much energy actually comes out of the power station. To do this, I connected my electronic load to the 12-volt car socket and set it to draw a continuous 80 watts of power. After several hours, the power station reached a battery level of 0% and I could read the final value on the measuring device. The measurement showed a total of 1,241 watt-hours, which is quite good and results in an efficiency of around 85%. As shown in the graphic, this puts the power station solidly in the middle range. Finally, the point that's likely most important to many, maximum power output. The 300 watts that this power station provides are certainly not the limit. This device has much more under the hood. Typically, the AC outlets have a maximum output of up to 2400 watts, which is really impressive. The catch is that this output is only achievable when the battery level is above 60%. If it consistently falls below 60%, the maximum output is limited to 2000 watts. I tested this in practice as well and confirmed that even when the battery level is below 60%, the power station can still continuously deliver 2,200 watts before the overload protection kicks in. When fully charged, peak outputs of up to 4,000 watts are possible, but only for very short periods, such as when turning on a device. After that, the overload protection also activates. However, when combined with the DC outputs, the power station can easily deliver up to 2,700 watts consistently allowing multiple devices to be operated simultaneously. The noise level produced by the device under load is also interesting. It's worth noting that the power station has two built-in fans, one on the right side, which pushes air in, and one on the left side, which expels warm air. I also found that the device has three fan levels that activate depending on the power demand. From 0 to 100 watts, the device is completely silent. When the fans are running above 100 watts, I measured a noise level of around 42 decibels. From around 500 watts, the noise level rises to 53 decibels, and at level 3, over 1,500 watts, the fans run at full speed and the device produces around 57 decibels of noise. As you can see, this device is definitely not the quietest compared to other devices I've tested. However, it has the significant advantage of keeping the power station well cooled. Even under heavy load, where I drew 2,000 watts for 10 minutes, I didn't observe temperatures exceeding 36 degrees on the device, which is really impressive. Nonetheless, I think a variable fan control would be a welcome feature. Overall, I can say that the S2000 Pro from All Powers performed well in the test. For anyone looking for a power station with solid capacity, plenty of ports, the ability to deliver serious power, and where noise level isn't a major concern, this device is not a bad choice, especially considering its price. By the way, you can find the current prices of this power station, which helps support this channel, in the video description below. What do you think of this device? Feel free to share your opinion or even your experience in the comments below. Otherwise, if you liked the video, show it with a thumbs up to support my work. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to my channel and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And with that, stay healthy, take care, and see you next time. Bye!